Today's topic, uh, I'm going to make a reaction on a very particular video and I'm going to mention why. So, recently I made a video on Be Practical. I'm going to put a, a, a card up there for you guys. And in that video, I talked up with, we saw um, the idea of a woman who does, who does know how to read, how to write, how to play on an instrument, but does not know how to cook or the basic things in life. Well, I came across this video of an episode called Wife Swap. And we have two women. One of them, I'm going to call it her a feminine woman. And the other, I'm going to call it a masculine woman. And you guessed it, the black woman was the masculine woman. And the white one was the feminine woman. I'm not making that up. You're going to see it for yourself. I also call that white lady a traditional, I would say, biblical woman. And the black woman, I call her a feminist woman. Now that is said, we're going to look at their behavior and their reactions to the rules and see what we can learn from those traits that they have. And let me know, guys, in the comment below who you would choose as your wife if you had to choose between these two women. Let's take a listen. Without further ado, let's see. wife has written a manual as a guide to the running of their homes. My household is organized by me. I'm a fire battalion chief. Oh my God. We have very traditional roles and I believe that as a wife, I should support my husband as the head of our household. What I call... Ah, I'm going to pause right here. Oh yes, I have to pause right here. Let's see. So, let's look at the rules, simple rules. She reads, the white lady here, I call her the feminine, the feminine woman. She reads the rules and um, to her surprise, the first thing that she reads about the black lady was, um, I am a fire battalion chief, whatever. This is the mindset of feminism or I would say feminist and this is the mindset the first thing that comes out of the mouth is I am an educated person I have this kind of degree I have that kind of job I make that kind of money that's the first thing that comes out of the mouth because they have nothing better to offer and um, you might think, Mario, you're already jumping into conclusion. This is going to be part one because I'm going to pause, I think, a lot. The video is about four minutes and seven seconds. So, But I'm going to be pausing a lot because there's so much to look into this thing. And now, when she read that, she's like, oh, wow. The black woman, when she read the first set of rules, and she said, and the white lady, the feminine woman said, uh, I believe as a wife that the husband is the head of the household. What was that reaction from the, from the feminist woman? What? Meaning, that's the, to her, meaning, this is redundant. This is the, f the dumbest thing I've ever heard. This doesn't exist anymore. And notice, when it comes to the biblical principle, you don't have to know too much about a person to know who they are. That 
enough tells me I would not go for that black woman. Even though I prefer black women than white women, I would choose her, the white, the feminine woman right here, the white one right here, because she portrays the characteristic of a virtuous woman from Proverbs chapter 31, if I'm not mistaken. The black lady, I already threw her off. She's already out of my list, like cross out. That's it. But I digress. Just for the sake of argument, let's suppose she's a good woman. Let's see actually what if she has the characteristic of being called a good woman. Let's move on. What? I call Jason my third child. I tend to yell a lot. Oh, no, no, no. That is not going to go over my house. Jack hold on. 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 Did she just say in her room, like this lady right here that you, are, that you guys are looking at, did she just put in her room that she calls Jason, her third child. Wait a minute. Who is Jason, do you think? Who would you believe Jason is? If she calls a person her third child, that means, or that must mean, that she has two children and there is somebody else she is comfortable enough to disrespect to put in that kind of rule that he, that person is her third child. Now, is that person maybe five or seven years old? I don't know. We're going to find out. But if that person ap uh, uh, appears to be her husband, uh, I'm, I am actually offended. Is he offended? I don't know. We'll see. But... The problem is, and that, that runs into the black community all the time. Remember, she said she yells a lot. And the feminine lady was like, uh oh, that's not going to work. Why do black women yell so much? I don't get it. Why do black women yell so much? Why? Why? Because to me, when you yell, it shows you're weak. Because if you have to yell at someone to get their attention, then you do not know how to communicate well. Point blank. I don't care what you think. If you are yelling to get people to do certain things or to listen to you, you have you have a weak personality and a weak mentality and you have to um, kind of like get to the point to get them to think that you are above them that is a no-no and please um, to all the men out there do not ever let any woman show you disrespect ever I can guarantee you she does not love her husband if she can call him comfortably her third child she does not one respect him and two she does not love him she's gonna treat him like anything that she wants and if he allows that then it's on him fun story uh, i was talking to, uh, to a girl one time and she would she used that expression this kid you know and i was like and I think she's talking to me because I think her brother was around. So I let that go. Second time, we're talking again. And she said that again. And I'm like, hmm, is she talking to me or is talking to somebody else? You know what? Let me try another, a different scene where she is by herself. 
And that time she was by herself and we were talking and then she said that. And I asked her, hold on, who are you calling this kid? And she said, me. I said, me. I said, okay. I am not a kid. That's first thing. Two, I am older than you by five years. So I could, I can change your diapers. And she said, well, but I always call any man kid. I said, those men that allow you to do that, you can do that to them. But as for me, as of today, this is the last time you ever use that expression on me. Next time he said, she said it again, she said, oh, uh, I'm sorry, 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 I, I forgot. You do not let a woman disrespect you because if you allow her to do that, she's going to walk all over you. And that is a no-no to me. You're not going to do that. That is for sure no. So that's what she just did by calling her husband, I'm assuming her husband, her third child is offensive and unacceptable. But let's move on. can be very impatient, so please listen to what he asked for and respond to his needs first. Before she even talks, <laughs> before she even talks, um, I think I kind of have an idea what her reaction is going to be like. <laughs> what? Who do you think I am? That I have to put that guy first? Are you are you crazy, woman? What are you? Are you even a woman? Because, yeah. I already kind of have an idea. Her reaction is like, that would never happen. I would never put his need first because I am supposed to be the um, the, the perfect person, the, uh, what term do you use nowadays for women that think like that? They think, oh, I'm the catch. I'm the, I'm supposed to be, uh, provided for. I'm not going to do that. It's supposed to be me, 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 me. But let's actually see if that's the reaction that she's going to have. first who's supposed to respond to his needs first me i make as i said as i said that's the reaction i was i was i was waiting for here's the thing here's the thing I mentioned in the in the chapter, I think it's called um, Marriage Get Better and Better, or if, it, if it's not, I think it's that one. Well, I talked about if you are, like, okay, if, I'm going to take an example of me. If I am married, who do I put first? My wife or myself? My wife goes first, and then I am next. Here's the thing, if now we have a baby or two children, who do I put first? My wife? Myself? Or the children? Most of us will say the children go first. Let me tell you something. That's the wrong answer. When you are married and you have children, if I am married and I have children, my wife always goes first. Then my children and then me. Here's the principle. It's an acronym called JOY. Jesus, others, you. The Jesus part, we're already going to have that first. No matter what. I'm going to love Jesus more than she, than I love her. And she's going to be the same way too. So that's not even a question. 
Now the O O and Y part, the others go first and I go last. How it how it works is because I said I would be I would marry that person for the rest of my life, that person automatically comes first. On this planet, that person comes first before anybody else, including my parents, my siblings and my children. The problem is we got it we got it backwards. We put the children first. No. Let me explain to you. If I'm thinking for myself, my wife goes first. Then my children. If my wife is thinking for herself, I'm hoping that she's gonna grasp that on that idea. I go first and then the children goes next and then she's last. When we are together now, when we are thinking as a couple, not just as an individual, but as a couple, the children go before us. Okay? So when I'm thinking to myself, she goes first, children's next, I am. But when it's she and I together thinking for ourselves, the children goes first. That's in marriage. When we are married, I'm thinking to myself, I want to please her first before I please my children. But when we are doing something together to please the family, then we're going to put the children first and then we come after. If you don't understand it, it's okay. Maybe when you get older, you're going to understand. But, let's move on. We're almost done with that part. I cook one to two times per week. Oh, no. No, I cook on a daily basis. At the beginning of this year, he started training in bodybuilding. Shut up. I would not get bodybuilder from the pictures that I see. He eats. Here comes the idea. Why are you making fun of a person's New Year's resolution? What it was. Why are you laughing because somebody does not look like what you want him to look like? Remember I mentioned earlier that there's a possibility that she does not know how to cook? Well, there we go. If she cooks only twice a week, I can guarantee you, she cooks twice a week, that's gonna be... Well, hold on. Maybe we're gonna find some more details in the future, but I'm not gonna run into conclusion. Maybe she knows how to cook, or maybe she's lazy, or maybe she doesn't have time to cook. That explains why, basically, in my mind, that she cannot be called a mother. Because nurturing is part of a mother's ability. Yes. But, let's move on. six meals daily you will have to prepare all of his meals for the week oh my god i feel that looking nice can go a long way in starting your day off right my husband always says an old barn can always use a fresh coat of paint if jason said that to me i would look at him like he's crazy okay i'm gonna say this one part um in that sense i think she's right okay so <laughs> Men, the men out there, please do not say that to your wives that an old house can, whatever this question says, old house can always get a fresh paint. Please, that's not a good thing to do. I know, I want you guys to be men, but not to be um, disrespectful. Because that is not, that, okay, that, that part is not right. That is just point blank not right. And if you have that Christian mindset, then that, you know, 
it's not a good thing to do. It doesn't take away from your manhood. What it does is it, it shows people that you will not let things go unnoticed, but certain things that is essential you're going to talk about. This right here is... That right here is just flat out outrageous, I'm going to say. He has some problems. Because if you think it's okay to tell your wife that kind of thing, then, yeah, that's, yeah, I don't know. That he that one, I'm going to have to agree with her on this one. I'm going to have to. Because th that's crazy right now. He's just overboard. But let's move on. Our children are not allowed out of their rooms unless they knock first to get permission. Whoa. I handle the majority of the chores. These children should be helping this mama out more, taking care, cleaning, chores. Misty's a doormat, and she just lets her husband, Jack, do whatever. Mm -mm -mm. It's now. All right. I'm going to stop right here for part one. Notice that when she was reading the thing, you know, let me just go back a little bit. Real quick. These children should be helping us. Our children are not allowed out of their rooms unless they knock first to get permission. Whoa. I hand. No, notice that part. That, I, th that, and again, this is where I think that the, not the wife, the husband, oh, I mean, well, the wife as well. That kind of rule uh, sets, sets the, the, the tone for children to become rebellious when they get older. And they will not want to take advice from their parents. Um, yes. Now, when I was growing up, there wasn't any door in my room. I had no door, actually. So you can walk in and walk out. So, but one thing I would say, if the rule had said they are not allowed to go into my, to their room, like meaning the parents' room, without permission, that I would agree with. My parents didn't allow me to get into their room unless they called us or if we had to do something there. And if we have to be inside, to go inside, and they are in there, we knock first. Because what if they are doing their thing? I don't want to see them butt naked and throwing up in the air. Like, no. So, that that part I can understand if they were supposed to get into the parents' room and they have to knock first before they enter. But if you are in your own room, uh, I mean, I guess to each his own, but I don't see how that would translate into a, a godly thing. Because remember, we are still thinking in a godly term. I don't see how that would be a good thing for a Christian home. For the children to knock in the door and ask, Mom, Dad, can I get out of my room? Like, that, I think, is just uh, not... Biblically, it's not... It's biblically incorrect. Incorrect. From my understanding of the Bible, I think it's incorrect to do such a thing that hard. But it's their rule, it's their house, they do what they want to do. But let's move on, we're almost done. The majority of the chores. These children should be helping this mama out more, taking care, cleaning, chores. Misty's a doormat and she just lets her husband Jack do whatever. Mm -mm. It's now. Notice the reaction of the, the feminine woman. Look what kind of language she uses. And the feminist woman right here. Look what kind of language she uses. And tell me who you pick. Now, interestingly enough, in the in the chapter we looked at, that is called Be Practical, we saw that boys and girls should learn the skills of life, which is cooking and cleaning, washing dishes, washing their own clothing, 
thing and ironing their own clothing, things of that nature. The feminist woman, because she wants to be she wants to be felt empowered and of the need of no man, she does all the load. She takes all the load onto herself without teaching her children to learn this thing. And now these kids are gonna are gonna grow up knowing nothing about practical life and be uh how do you say it? When you need when you are always in the need of favors of people. Ah oh, the word just left me now. I think it it, it, uh, it means they're gonna be they're gonna have to live off of people. Meaning they cannot take care of themselves. They cannot cook for themselves. They have to cook. They have to go places to get food. They're going to be dependent upon people. While she is a so-called independent woman. But she's teaching the, her children to be dependent. Yes, that's bad. The feminine woman, the feminine or traditional woman says... These children should learn to cook. They, learn, they should learn to help around and do these things and do that. Because when they learn to do things, <laughs> if if you can get children to be busy, they will be, they will cause less trouble. If they are busy, they will cause less troubles. And here is a perfect example of a mother, that lady right here, that was not supposed to be a mother. She is not fit to be a mother. The white lady, the, the feminine woman, she is more of a mother kind. Even though there are certain rules that I, I kind of think is overboard. But she thinks more of everybody, everybody, instead of herself. Now, gents, gentlemen, tell me in the comments who you would choose to be your wife if you had to marry one. I would choose the white lady, even though I I don't like white I I wouldn't I don't like white women like that. Yes, friends, yes, but to marry one, no. But in this case, I would take her a thousand times or a million years over that black lady. So. I'm going to stop right here. This is part one. This was Mario Michel. I hope to see you guys again. Until then, Mario out.